Hi everybody, this is Randy of Randy's Roost and the Buy Annie Bag Makers group on Facebook. And today I'm going to give you some cutting and quilting tips for Buy Annie's Bowl Me Over 2.0. Uh, most of these tips will work for most Buy Annie bags. So if you look in your pattern on page 3, or if you're not working on this particular bag, it's somewhere in the beginning of your pattern, um, usually under the section that says um, cut quilted fabric and seal edges, or something to that effect. Uh, the only time that's really different is on the older by any patterns. So the pattern will give you a few different options for how to go about quilting your fabric. I'm actually going to start talking about option two because that's the one I have the least to say about. So option two has you quilt one huge quilt sandwich. And if you're not familiar with what a quilt sandwich is, in this case, it's a piece of main fabric, a piece of soft and stable, and a piece of lining fabric, and they're all layered together, and then you quilt them together. So in option two, you're quilting one very large quilt sandwich, which I honestly only recommend if you have a long arm machine or are going to send your fabric out to be quilted. You can do it on domestic, however, you will probably give yourself a headache. I don't recommend it at all. The way I do recommend going about cutting and quilting is option one, which is what you really should do, especially if you are newer to buy any projects. So option one has you quilt two smaller, more manageable quilt sandwiches, and they're called quilted set A and quilted set B. You do have to do both because certain parts of your project are going to be cut out of quilted set A and other parts of your project are going to be cut out of quilted set B. So you have to do both. So as you can see, I've blacked out most of the measurements on here. Um, you might think I'm weird for being so strict about hiding all these measurements and everything, but I, I can tell you, I was always careful about that. But now that I work on the pattern development side of things, I promise so much work goes into devel developing these patterns. And I don't want anybody to be able to make this without spending the tiny, tiny amount of 10 bucks. <laughs> Honestly, with all the work that goes into these patterns, they should probably charge twice that. And it would still be fair, in my opinion. But anyway, as you look at this little cutting layout, uh, you see your quilted set A and quilted set B. The only measurement I didn't remove from here is the tops of these pieces, because I want you to understand that when you put these two pieces together, that's the width of your fabric. Most quilting cotton is about 42 inches wide. So you've got 21, 21. You put them together, that's the width of your piece. Okay, but you're working with it as two separate pieces here. Okay, and then you've got your selvages running along the sides this way. Okay, so now you hopefully understand a little bit more about what this diagram is showing you. And now we can start talking about the individual pieces of the bags. So for the most part on by any patterns, the dimensions are listed as height by width. So the only time that's really different is on older by any patterns before they standardized that. So on this pattern, everything is height by width. So for, for this bag, almost all of these pieces are, are oriented here on this diagram as you will look at them on your bag. So I'm looking at the body front, the way these measurements are listed here, height by width, that's how that piece is going to look on your bag. So that's really only a concern if you're using directional fabric or you're fussy cutting, but you still want to keep that in mind. That's something that you need to understand for all by any patterns. So for the body front, the body back, the facings, um, the pockets, and the flap, those are all oriented the way they're going to be on the back. The only parts you have to be a little more careful with if you're using directional fabric are the zipper strips and the side strip. So I want to take a look at the side strip first. So you can see the words on this piece, the way it's labeled, the words run this way, right? So the way this is going to go on the bag, let me zoom out a little bit. The way this is going to go on the bag, if you can picture this being the side strip, this long thinner piece right here, 
I've got my long thinner piece right here. So I have my directional fabric here. Now this side strip piece is going to form the bottom of the bag and then wrap around to form the sides. So if I have directional fabric, my faces are smiley over here, but when they wrap around, they're frowning. So I want to show you real quick how to fix that. So if you're using directional fabric, <clears throat> excuse me, for your side strip, what you want to do, now this has to be done before quilting. So you want to do this to your main fabric before you quilt. <clears throat> you're going to cut this down the middle like that. And then you're going to turn this piece around and sew these back together with a half inch seam. So you have a half inch seam here, which is different from the normal quarter inch seam. So when you cut this piece of fabric initially, you need to make it an inch longer this way. So you can have space for that seam. Okay. If you are using directional fabric, I will say be very, very careful that you have some extra fabric. Now, when these patterns are written, they are generous with, um, you'll usually have a little bit of leftover fabric, but if you're using directional fabric, you really want to make sure you have even a little extra just in case, because the worst thing in the world is running out when you're halfway through preparing your project. It's super frustrating. So worst case scenario, you have extra, you make a little matching bag to go with this one. And that's not so terrible, right? So um, now one type of fabric I am a little bit, I'm, I'm going to give just give you a word of caution. Some directional fabric, well, let me back up for a second. Most directional fabric, when you look at it with the selvages on the side, you look at the width of the fabric, and that's how you see your design upright, the way you'd want to see it on the bag. But on some directional fabric, Tula Pink, I'm looking at you, it's oriented the other way. So that's going to mess with your cutting layout a little bit, and you're probably going to need some more fabric. So give yourself a little leeway, do yourself a favor, buy extra fabric. I'm giving you permission. <laughs> buy more fabric. There is also a cutting layout for your coordinating fabrics. It pretty much follows all the same information I just gave for the other cutting layout. If you're fussy cutting coordinating fabric, more power to you. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever done that other than um, maybe the for the flap facing on, on the bowl me over I made for my mom. I don't know if you all saw that. It had mice on, the, on that little inside of the flap. But other than that, I usually use uh, solid fabric or near solid is really what I use, like grunge or something like that. So it's less of a concern. Um, so what I want to talk about next is the labels. So on the last page of pretty much every by any pattern, unless you're getting into the really vintage patterns, there is a sheet of labels. And the first thing you want to do after you have read your pattern thoroughly and studied it, of course, you want to photocopy this page of labels and cut them out. And then you're going to use these to label all the parts of your project throughout the entire project. You do not want to go through all this work cutting and everything and then get everything mixed up. Don't do that. <laughs> Just save yourself the trouble. Keep these labels on the pieces. And while I'm talking about that, I want to just reiter reiterate one of the rules of the Slow Along groups and the Buy Any Bag Makers group. If you do have these labels on your pieces when you take photos, you have to hide the measurements somehow. The easiest way to do that is to just turn the bottom of the label around to the back. That's perfectly fine. As long as the measurement part of it is hidden, it's fine. Thank you in advance for doing that because I really, really don't like removing photos. I love seeing people's work and whenever I have to remove a photo, it makes me sad. Okay, so if you're new to buy any patterns, it might be a little overwhelming to just look at this whole sheet of labels and say, oh my goodness, where do I start? This is a lot. But if you just slow down for a moment and take your time to look at it and read the directions first, it's not so scary. So as you can see with mine, I like to color code everything, which makes it even easier to understand. So as I mentioned earlier, 
for this bag we have two quilted sets quilted set a quilted set b okay so each quilted set has three pieces so in blue i have the three pieces of quilted set a so there's the main fabric for quilted set a the soft and stable for that same set and the lining for that set all three are in blue okay and then for quilted set b they're all in pink those three pieces so that way i know when i look at this those are my quilted sets okay and that sort of separates it from the other stuff like the coordinating fabric um, this bag has some pieces that are not quilted so it has uh, these two here their main fabric not quilted and these two here their lining fabric not quilted okay but for the quilted sets you quilt the two sets and then when you go to the bottom you'll see from quilted set a cut and these are the pieces of your bag that you're going to cut from quilted set a okay so i have those in blue to match my blue up here and that works for me if you have another way to make this make sense for you that's another reason you photocopy this so you can write all over it okay and then quilted from quilted set b cut these pieces they're all in pink they match the pink up here so after i quilt these three together i'll go down here and cut these pieces out now there is a third way of going about cutting and quilting the pieces of your bag and i don't honestly recommend this method if you're new to bag making or new to buy any bags um, but if you're more comfortable with those then what you might want to try is cutting first and then quilting so when you do it that way you would be quilting each piece of your bag individually and that not only allows you to do different quilting on each piece but it allows you to use more than the three fabrics that the pattern tells you to use if that's something you want to do so that's the way i usually do things i think it kind of lets me be more creative and it makes the bag a little bit more special and more personal for me um and it also makes the pieces that i'm quilting even more manageable so they're smaller pieces and for me just it makes it seem like the quilting goes by faster quilting bags honestly is not my favorite part of the process so i want to feel like i'm getting it done even quicker so when i'm doing those little pieces and each one is different it goes faster maybe i have a short attention span or something i don't know but <laughs> that's the way i like to do it if you do do it that way it's very very important that you cut each piece a little bit larger than the dimensions on these labels because when you quilt the pieces you will encounter some shrinkage so the quilting stitches kind of pull the fabric in a little bit so what i do is i add an inch to the height and an inch to the width and then i quilt and then i cut down to the dimensions on the labels okay and one other important note is after you quilt and cut your pieces down or the other way around if you're doing it that way it's very important that you seal the edges in the pattern you will see that mentioned what that means is you do i usually do a straight stitch some people use a zigzag you stitch around all the edges of each piece you just go around once to um it compresses the soft and stable for one which makes assembly much much easier it also will ensure that your pieces stay um, flat and smooth and everything all the layers are together and you you will not get bunching or accidentally get a piece folded and you know you don't want that to happen so we seal the edges to finish off everything and make it easier to assemble okay i just have you know on these labels you'll also see your bias binding and your facings and uh, strapping um, fold over elastic mesh if you're using it i just have a quick note about mesh so when you're cutting mesh believe it or not it is sort of directional in a way so when you look at the mesh you see these little holes that look like o's um, when the o's are tall and skinny as opposed to um, short and wide the mesh will stretch more horizontally 
so it has more stretch in one direction than it does in the other. So depending what you're going to put in your pockets and how they're going to be used, you need to pay attention to how you cut your mesh. And just like all the other parts of the bag, the dimensions for the mesh pieces are also listed as height by width. So just keep that in mind. Hey, this video is already 15 minutes. I don't know what I've been jibber jabbering about this whole time, but <laughs> I'm going to put the quilting information in a separate video. Okay, so I will see you then. Bye.